Okay, everybody. I've had a lot of requests uh, for a video on how to use the rotary, and I'll admit that it was not the easiest for me to use when I first started, so I'm going to go over the things that I've learned uh, over the past, well, several cups. So let's get started. So today I have a rotary, and this is a standard fiber laser rotary that we all get. It's the, the chuck kind. I'm connected to the system. Now, what I'm not going to go over today is I'm not going to go over uh, how to get everything configured in here because it came configured. Um, however, I will post pictures of what the settings look like. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mount the cup in here. So I have a standard Arctic cup. Uh, this one was a bad engraving, so I'm basically going to put it on here. Um, so the key thing to note is that it, it sticks around um, the chuck. So it doesn't actually sit within these jaws right here. It actually sits on the outside, which is not really what it's designed for, but I'll use it for anyway. The next thing I do is I get uh, the, the chuck adjustment hole towards the top. I make sure that it can fit over. Now the key part here is making sure that it can fit in um, evenly. So I'm going to open the chuck jaws up to pre put pressure on the other end here, tighten it up, and I'm going to spin it. And I'm going to watch as I spin it. It's hard to see on the video, but I'm going to watch as I spin it from this side to make sure that it looks relatively even. Now keep in mind that it's not going to be perfect because the, the chuck jaws actually pushing outward actually expand this outward. Uh, and it's not perfect. Um, so let's switch back to the computer here. So I have this image. This is a United States Navy submarine warfare insignia. I did a lot of these for a fundraiser recently. Um, let's type a name. Elephant Engraving Co., which is my company. Now, this is going to wrap around the cup, obviously, which is why we're using the rotary. I don't want my, um, my text to be a different uh, or wider than that. I just don't think it looks good. I do want it to be centered with this. So I've marked points on here and it's hard to see, but there's actually a Sharpie marker here. And where my rotary sits, I know that the dead center of this cup sits at eight millimeters in EasyCAD the way I lined it up. So I, you can see here that I have eight millimeters for the insignia, which stays the same. And then if you center the text, so notice the text is centered. If you have it left or right aligned, it won't work like that. Um, if you have it centered, uh, it will come close to eight millimeters when you edit the text. So 7.963 mils, so I'm actually gonna put eight mils, press enter, and it's gonna get perfectly aligned there. Um, I already have my hatch setting set up. A couple things to note, uh, in my blue hatch setting, I do have three here. So when you're actually splitting, and I'll show you how this works in a second, the rotary will not come back and hatch again, right? Also, if you have hatch settings on the left side in the actual hatch, and you have more than one count, it, the rotary does not seem to honor those in rotary mark. Maybe in split mark they do, I don't use split mark, but in rotary mark they do not. Um, so this is a black cup, it's pretty easy. I have all my settings. So I'm gonna select what I want selected. One thing to note here, I do have a cover up hatch. Um, and that's designed to repair cups or to strip the, the powder coating off cups, you know, that I use as test cups or I sell for factory seconds if I mess up the text. Um, that's how it works. If you hide this, that's great, but when you go to do rotary mark, even though it doesn't show it here, it will actually engrave this hidden section. So always get into a habit of mark select down here and then actually select what you're wanting to engrave. So laser. So I see here what it's going to engrave. So there's a bunch of settings here. So first thing is you wanna make sure that your rotary is lined up. I have invert selected, depending if I have it on the other side, I won't have it selected. Um, again, I'm not gonna go over those settings in detail. Uh, distance per, that doesn't really matter here. If you look in split mark, the distance per is actually how much it's gonna move per rotation, but we don't have a manual rotation adjust. Notice distance per, if I press up and down, you can see here at the Y value, it's actually going to do this. And let me switch over uh, to the rotary. If I press up, see how it rotates that cup five millimeters at a time. So I'm actually gonna put it back where it was, where I want this chuck adjustment centered. Um, and I'm gonna go back. So let's go back to rotary mark. In rotary mark, my split size, this is how often it's gonna split. So you can do the four split by line. So you can double click to create lines here. That's fine. Um, 
that's tedious, right? So you double click to create a line, right click to remove a line, and then you wanna have mark split by, mark by split line selected if that's how you wanna select it. Now, if I'm doing large text or something I want to look really good, I will actually double click between all of these to make split lines so I don't have to split in the middle of a letter. But with my settings, that's not really an issue. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna adjust your part diameter and focus. So my focus height of my tower here is where I need it to be set. Um, other people may want it set at you know, different heights uh, and that's, that's totally fine. Um, but your part diameter and your actual focal length matter. So a Yeti is 100 millimeters, the new Yetis. This Arctic is 104 millimeters. And I used um, a micrometer to measure that. Uh, my focus length, because I'm increasing by four, the distance between the distance between here and my tower now changes since it's two on it four, it's going to be two on each side, right? Because um, it's a round object. So I'm going to actually change this focus length to 463 millimeters, which is perfect for what I need. All right. This is an interesting one. <laughs> Excuse me. Force all split. If you check force all split then it's not gonna go by layer or by group. It's actually going to split the entire vertical section at a time. So if you select force all split, let's use this red mark here. So let's say it's engraving in here first and in here. If you don't check that box, and these are two separate layers or objects in EasyCAD, it's actually going to split this by three millimeters all the way across, then it's gonna come back and it's gonna do this, the text, right? So the graphic and then the text. That's what you want. If you do this, what I've found is that the laser, if, if your laser start and laser off uh, time settings are not correct, it will cause, um, it will actually cause lines to be engraved down your cup as the laser moves back and forth. That's obviously bad. So the other thing that it does is it changes the, the temperature of the metal changes while it's over engraving another part of the image. Now, I, I'm not a metallurgist, I'm not an expert here. However, what I've noticed is that there's lines left and it's not very clean. So what I want it to do is I want it to engrave the submarine warfare insignia in one pass, then come back and do the text. So that's what I do. So let me remove these line markers. Ah, all right. I'm gonna uncheck mark all split. I'm gonna triple verify my split size, which I do three millimeters, my part diameter and focus length. So last note on split size, I choose three millimeters. I have found that if you choose something smaller, like one, or you do something like I did 0.005 or 0.025005, what's gonna happen is it's gonna to be too small and it's actually gonna cause issues. So I'll show you one the correct way and then I'll show you one the incorrect way. So let's take a look at what happens when I actually press engrave. So you'll notice that it's doing the three millimeter splits on just the insignia. And for those of you that talk about extraction fans and everything, I understand I actually have a fan behind me that's blowing the air across, which is keeping it away from my face so I don't breathe it in. You can't really notice this, but with my loop count here of three, it's actually blasting three times. Every one of these little lines here, it's doing three times. And if you go back and rewind a little bit, you may be able to watch it. It's really hard to see even with the naked eye. So you'll notice it finished the insignia. Now it's going back and it's actually doing the text. The text looks extremely clean. There's no split marks. There's nothing else that are on there. And I have a really good look uh, on my tumbler here. So that's great. So let's close out of this, and let's just go back and select the submarine warfare insignia and go to rotary mark. Now remember how I said that split size matters. So let's do a split size of 0.05, and that's ridiculous, but let's mark that. Okay, so see what it just did there? See how it skipped all the way down to the other end of the cup? That has now created a problem for me, for my cup. It's burned a line where it shouldn't go. It's cut a line. Um, and now this product is not sellable. Luckily this is a test cup, so it doesn't really matter. It is honoring most of my 0 0.05 millimeter split. Um, the rotary is handling it just fine. The laser's cutting what it should, but for some reason, EasyCAD does not understand to actually split some of these complete lines. 
Um, and you'll see some of the flashes of light there where it grabs the entire path or line uh, outside of its 0.05 millimeter split and this actually causes problems for us. So I'm actually gonna stop it. And I'm not sure if you're able to see it, but here you can see that it, you have two lines. You have the proper line that curves around and then you have this other one that curves around and then jumps up. So now I have a line cutting in the middle of my image. For some reason, EasyCAD does not understand how to split properly if you do it too small. I don't know if there's something I'm doing wrong or it's doing wrong, but it's not right. So keep your split size somewhere reasonable. I recommend three millimeters uh, or above for everything. So that's the basics. Um, if you have any questions, put the comments below. I'll try and answer them. Uh, and thanks for your time.